السلام عليكم اهلا وسهلا بحضراتكم اهلا وسهلا بسادة الحضور اهلا وسهلا بيكم في بنار جديد وبصراحة موضوع ظريف جدا ان شاء الله النهاردة نتكلم عن ترانزيشن اوف كير اوف جبنايل ايجيوباتيك ارثرايتس فروم بيدياتريك تو عدد روماتولوجي وطبعا يشرفنا معنا يكون معنا دكتور بروفيسور ياسر المدني بروفيسور اوف روماتولوجي كانتر بيورج يونيفرستي كاتن بيور يونيفرستي كانت في يونايتد كينجدوم وبرضه اعرفكم بنفسي انا دكتور رامي شربيني كورسانتا اوبياتيك اناتولوجي عند كورسانتا اوبياتيك كلينيك نيوتريشن عند ممبر اوف جابان سوسايتي فور ذا بروموشن اوف ساينس اهلا وسهلا بيك دكتور ياسر نورتنا وشكرا لوجود حضرتك معانا وشكرا لوقتك وان شاء الله طبعا تبقى محاضره جميله زي المحاضره بتاعت حضرتك شكرا ليك واهلا وسهلا بحضرتك اتفضل شكرا ثانك يو دكتور رامي ابريشيت ذا كايند انفيتيشن تو بي ويز يو هير توداي Uh, uh, and um, I'll be happy to take any questions at the end of the presentation. My talk today actually has been prepared by uh, my dear colleague, Dr. Hala Lutfi, Professor of Pediatrics and Pediatric Rheumatology, Cairo University, and myself. And uh, we both co co collaborate uh, as a team within Egyptian College of Pediatric Rheumatology. Uh, in all, every one of us, we have moments of small changes and there are other moments of big changes. And these really big changes, we call them transition. And what a challenge is that transition moving through teenagers into adulthood. And I believe all of us have seen such challenges with our children or with our neighbors or relatives. So why are we talking about challenge, transition? First, it is increasingly acknowledged all over the world, not only in certain country or certain region, it has been acknowledged how important it is uh, for our patients. And the evidence is there that this is a, a change in the life course and an important approach to care for our patients. And already several healthcare centers have already developed or implemented its own transition programs. Is it important? Yes, because nearly half of the young patients with juvenile arthritis will enter into adulthood with active disease, or they may develop flare-up of their disease during the adulthood period. Many of them will require ongoing and often long-term treatment regimes. So they are already on disease-modifying drugs or biologics. Who will look after them? Who will monitor the disease course and disease activity? Who will adjust the treatment? Let me share with you a nice story about Ziad, who is one of our patients. Ziad now is 17 years old, male, who has been diagnosed to have juvenile lupus. At the age of eight, he was diagnosed to have macrophage activation syndrome, secondary to juvenile lupus. Admitted to ICU, given IV IG, antibiotics, followed by IV methyl prednisolone, IV cyclophosphamide pulse therapy twice monthly for six doses, with gradual improvement con uh, of consciousness level, of fever, appetite, all lab result and parameters of tests have been back to normal. Completed nine pulses of cyclophosphamide, gradual withdrawal of steroids, a marked improvement of all his symptoms. After completing his induction therapy, Ziad was maintained on, on mycophenolate mofetil and five milligrams of steroids every other day. Now, during this period, when he was in that uh, pediatric department, he had developed a strong bond with the uh, treating pediatric rheumatologist and all the clinic staff. He used to come to the clinic with his mom, he was really responsible, she was really responsible for all his appointments, reservation, medication, nutrition, decision making. He was doing very well without any exacerbation. Consistently, appropriate lupus medication, immunization, organ monitoring, we were arranging for nephrology and ophthalmology consultations, everything was done for the end. And actually, as you can see here, he, when we asked him to draw his picture, he drew the picture of Iron Man, and he said, I want to be an Iron Man so that I can beat lupus and get stronger than lupus. 
At the age of 13, his treating pediatric rheumatologist observed that he became reluctant to come to the full of visits. So, when we spoke about uh, to Ziad about why you are not coming, lots of questions. I don't want to go to the adult hospital. I don't want to start all over again and tell my story to the new doctor. Why I'm shorter than my friend? How can I go to college or university and work with multiple medical visits? Why my parents are not allowing me to go out during sunny days without sun blockers? So these questions, will, you will face it if you are treating uh, uh, pediatric children. When they get older, you will have these questions. Why all the time I am different? When we speak about psychological impact of the disease, we will speak about uh, 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 we, we, there is a difference between psych, uh, psychological problems in children versus adults. When an adult has pediatric case or uh, uh, arthritis, usually there is a stage of denial. No, it's not me. Then they become angry and refusing to uh, accept that they have the disease. And when the disease becomes chronic, and they find themselves having the disease and have to live with, disease, with the disease, they go into a phase of depression. In children, it's different. Number one, there is a question mark about perception of body image, especially if the patient has been taking steroids during growth period. Coping with sexual feelings, they are now looking at the other sex and how we are going to deal with them. Establishing self-responsibility. Instead of mom coming, I am the one in charge of myself. Establishing vocational direction and adherence to therapeutic regimen. Many of the children actually refuse to take their medication. So at this stage, you can imagine what happened next. Scenario one, Ziad will no longer have follow-ups at pediatric rheumatology units and will be transferred to rheumatology, adult rheumatology care. However, as he is refusing to go to the other rheumatology care, he will continue coming to the pediatric rheumatology for several years. However, he cannot be admitted to the pediatric ward. He can only be seen in the emergency situations. And his only contact with the medical team will be mainly for emergency, whereas he'll be asking for help all the time. However, he will not receive any proper follow-up of his medication investigations on monitoring of his medications, ongoing monitoring for his organs or proper follow-up. Or the alternative is to have a proper transition program to allow him to be moved from the children to the adult care without having, with, or without having this fear or overcoming this fear. So at the end of this presentation, we need to agree on definition of the transition, what are our aims of transition, current situation regarding transition, and how to make it successful from pediatrics to adult rheumatology care. We, can, we will also describe examples of current transition program in rheumatology. And we, at the end, we will discuss our current pr proposal for transition program for Egypt and Arab children with rheumatic diseases. So when we speak about transition of health care, we are talking about transition from a child-centered care to an adult-oriented care. So we have to understand that the transition is a process. It's not just an event. It's different from transfer of care. It has to be planned, and it begins long before the actual transfer of the care. What do we mean by child-centered care? Family-centered. Mom or dad is always present. Developmentally oriented, gross, body weight, height, nurturing, high level of psychological support from the family and from the team, interdisciplinary, we arrange for all other specialities who may be attending the, the, the clinic, involve parents, direction and consent, and it is flexible. Adult oriented, meaning that it is now individual based care, so we rely on the person, disease focused about his disease activity cognitive approach, we need his understanding of the whole issue, multidisciplinary, 
and require patient to be confident and function independently, able to make decisions regarding his management. So the aim of the, of the transition is we need to target providing high quality, coordinated, uninterrupted healthcare. It's patient-centered, age, considering the age, the culture, and the development, but in the meantime, it should be flexible, responsive, and comprehensive. We need to promote the skills in the young man, the young person, to be able to communicate, able to make decisions, self-confident about self-care and self-determination. He is able, we are able to provide support for the parents or the carers for the young people or the young child during this process. So when we speak about the current practice, there is always evidence. It is important aspect of optimal health care. However, unfortunately, this is not present in all centers. So far, there is deficient in training. The service is always fragmented. We have adult care on one side, pediatric care on the other side. There may be always some challenges with funding. For example, in Egypt, children are children treatment. All all the children are funded for free treatment, different from adults, and this can be different schemes. Currently, up to half of the children do not make successful transfer to adult clinics. However, despite all these challenges, there is commitment from both the pediatric and adult care to make a successful transition plan. Let me speak to you about successful transition care program. There is a link of personnel and lead clinician, and this is important to have a lead clinician with good experience to guide and help the children as well as the younger colleagues uh, working in the clinic. Adult rheumatology team with appropriate skills to deal with the children. Individualized approach. The everything should be tailored to the patient condition and patient requirements. Educational support is also important to the children. Support for parents and care and carers. Primary health care and social educational care. Don't forget, school is an important issue in or is important player in this equation, school or, and or university. Medical summary is important. We cannot transfer the patient without a medical summary and administrative support. We need to train our colleagues. And most important, and on top of all of this, is to have a transition policy. When we speak about a policy, we have to speak about some document that will describe the practice approach to transition. It should include also privacy, consent information, how we are educating all the staff, how we monitor the patients after the policy, and we share the outcomes of this transition. Recording also is very important. We have to establish the criteria for transition. However, we have to use a flow sheet, incorporate all the elements of the transition into the clinical care process. Is the child ready or not? This is very important. And as you will see in standard life, we don't have certain age for transition of care. We have an age to start assessing the patient, whether he is ready for transition of care or not. And this usually starts at the age of 20, 12 to 14. We have to agree what are the goals and actions with the child, what are the weak points that we can work on till the child is able to be transferred to the adult care. So when we speak about transition planning, we speak about development and regularly updating the plan of care, prepare the child and the carer for adult approach, Determine the level of need for decision-making support. Plan with the child and caregiver for optimal timing of transfer. That's what I'm saying. We cannot transfer all the children in one age and say, okay, you go. Obtain consent from the child that he is happy for his paperwork to be moved to the adult. Assist the child to identify an adult provider and provide linkage to the insurance or self-care management program. So when we agree on a care, there will be a date confirmed for the transfer, 
and this could be carried out when the condition is stable, not during activity. We have to complete the transfer package, including the final transition, readiness assessment, plan of care, medical summary, emergency care plan, legal documents. Prepare letter with the transfer package to send to adult practice confirming the adult practice receipt of transfer package. Confirm with the adult provider and the pediatric provider responsibility for care until young adult is seen in adult setting. So to complete the transfer, we need to contact the child and the parents. We need to communicate with the other practice and we need to build up an ongoing collaborative partnership. So can we share some examples of current transition? Yes. So the EOR have already published its standard and recommendation for transition of care for the young children and juvenile onset. Similarly, the American College has published also its uh, uh, pediatric to adult rheumatology care. Spain also has published its consensus on the, of the Spanish Society of Pediatric Rheumatology for Transition of Care. So there are several models of care. However, each model can be flexible, dependent on the local service and skills. Even it can be limited to geographical locations. Therefore, when we speak about Middle East or Arab-speaking countries, we need to speak about what is suitable for us, how we can set up our service. Let me share with you our service that we have set up in Egypt. So in pediatric rheumatology clinic, staff should help the patients to become more independent with their own health care through. Number one, we have already developed a simplified animated information leaflets. And we have published modified illustrated form of juvenile arthritis multidimensional assessment report, JAMAR. When you add the, the illustration, when you add the pictures, it makes the children more interested in completing the questionnaire. It makes them e understand the questionnaire easier and be happy to answer it and document how do they feel. Shared decision making is important. Unfortunately, we do not have this publicly in our countries, perhaps because of many questions and the patient's fear of medication rather than the disease. And it's highly recommended that to have joint clinics. So even when I was doing this, I was attending with the children clinic and the children, sorry, and the, 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 when we have the clinic in the other side, the pediatric doctors attend the adult clinic. So in the pediatric clinic, there will be representative from the other clinic, and in the other clinic, there will be representative from the pediatric clinic. This will guarantee that the child will not feel that there is transition of care. The child will feel, will feel it is continuation of care, and he is known to the adult care doctor. This is an example of our uh, uh, patient reported outcome, illustrated one, where all the questions and the answers are shown with pictures to help the patient answer the question easily and without difficulty in understanding it. We have also arranged, published our uh, uh, Arabic transitional readiness assessment, and this is for the children and for the youth. This is very important because as we are assessing the patient, we can identify how the patient stage now and whether there are missing points that we can tackle to support him or her for the transition of care. At the adult rheumatology clinic, we will provide information leaflet about the medication, medical summary is shared, and the transfers usually occur with, when the disease is stable between age 16 to 18. So this is the example of the readiness questionnaire, the Arabic version. <coughs> and this is to be completed by the patient. If the patient need requirement, require any help, he can ask a doctor. And in the questions, actually, we tell them that you are now have gotten older and we need to know that you know your rights and your responsibility. 
So we are asking the children, are you responsible for making the decisions regarding your medical care uh, or your parents? And if you need help to uh, come to the hospital or to carry out to uh, uh, implement the social services or you need someone with you. <coughs> then we ask about some questions about understanding the importance of moving from the pediatric to the other care and how he is keen on uh, his medical management, how he is confident uh, that he can look after himself. We ask him about uh, whether he is aware of the nature of his disease, is aware of the nature of the plan of his management, and is he aware of his current medications and how to use them, what are the possible side effects of the medication, and whether he is keen to get the medication before he runs out of the medicine. Also, we ask the children whether they can take the medication without someone reminding them of the need to do this, and whether he's able to inject himself or not, and uh, whether he can have joint injection or not, and whether he feels that there is changes in the, the medical care after 18 and what are the changes can be. Also, we ask about his ability to book his appointments, how he can contact the doctor if he needs and for emergency care, how he can behave if he has uh, any problem or he, he can prepare a list of the questions before coming for the, for the appointment. Will he be committed to the appointments with his doctor? Does he know the pharmacy? where he can get his medicine? Does he have a, a, a way of transport to come to the hospital? Whether there is medical insurance and how he can contact or we can arrange for contact with the social societies or communities that can support his medication. So all of these questions actually we need to assess. And according to the patient's answers, we define whether the patient needs some more training or guidance regarding something like how to give himself injections, how to book his appointment, the importance uh, of having blood tests, what could be the side effects of the medication. So we need to explain everything to the patient and try to give him the answers or teach him how to do the procedures from the period of 12 till the period of 14 to 16 years old. So just take home messages. The transition of care in childhood onset traumatic diseases is very important for optimal health care. Preparation is very important. We need to assess our patients while they are in the pediatric clinic. Collaboration and communication between adults and pediatric children and pediatric rheumatology teams is vital. And we have to guarantee that this is going. Promoting self-management is also important and how to implement this as early as possible is again vital for the management process. Insurance, work, school, school is very important and we have already prepared some information leaflets to the school so that the teachers can understand what does it mean morning stiffness and what they can ask the children to do. For example, if they have a sports activity or any first one or two uh, sessions in the school, the teacher must understand the nature of the disease and how to manage. Transitional policies also must be adopted for different cultures and must be suitable for patients who can follow it without any difficulty. At the end, I'm just highlighting the importance of setting up transition of care we are currently uh, doing uh, uh, one full consensus for us in Egypt. We hope to make it uh, over Arab countries uh, with Youth World publication. I'm happy to support any team who would like to implement uh, a similar service, whether English or Arabic, and happy to have your questions. These are some of the references, and thank you. شكرا دكتور ياسر شكرا على المحاضره الجميله الاستراتيجي دي مش بصراحه موضوع جميل وموضوع مهم شكرا لحضرتك وشكرا للمحاضره فعلا الممتعه وتيزا بوينت لو في حد يا جماعه عايز يسال اي سؤال بعد اذنكم يرفع ايده وانا اعمله ان ميوت وانا هفتح الشات دلوقتي يعني يعني في اقل من دقيقه كده الشات هيفتح 
ولو في اي حد عايز يتواصل مع دكتور ياسر دايركت يرفع ايده وانا هعمل له انميوت هل في اي سؤال يا جماعه طب خلينا نسالهم احنا نسالهم احنا بقى <تصفيق> مين عنده ترانزيشن اوف كير في طب موجود في بيدياتريك روماتولوجي كلينكس عندك في في ترانزيشن اوف كير مين عنده لو ما فيش مين عايز يعمل عنده ما هو اي سيب نو انسر ان ذا تشات هو بصراحه دكتور موضوع ترانزيشن اوف كير ده مهم جدا مهم جدا يعني لان طبعا الروماتولوجي بي ديزيز كرونيك ديزيز فترانزيشن اوف كير ده مهم جدا يطبق في العيادات اللي هي بالذات لما تبقى بيدياتريك روماتولوجي ديزيز وبروجريس يبقى ادلت الادهانس والكومبرايز تو ذا ديزيز عند ميديكيشن اند تو ذا كلينيك بيبقى بيبقى صعب جدا هل في اي حد يا جماعه عايز يضيف حاجه او يسال حاجه في المحاضره؟ لا ما في معناه المحاضره واصله كويس اه لا لا بصراحه الموضوع جميل ويمكن بالعكس على فكره انا يمكن انا عمري اسمع من حضرتك يعني ترانزيشن اوف كير انا يمكن انا سمعته مره من فتره حتى ما لقيتش ليه يعني ناس كتيره بتتكلم عنه حتى في يعني في المؤتمرات الروماتولوجي اللي انا حضرتها مش هايلايتد كتير بصراحه موضوع مهم فعلا يعني لا يقل اهميه عن الروماتيك ديزيز نفسه يعني. على العموم لو الحد سامعنا احنا المؤتمر بتاعنا ان شاء الله 30 نوفمبر 1 ديسمبر 2 ديسمبر انا كنت حطيت اللينك ريجستريشن والبروجرام على الفيسبوك بيج واهلا وسهلا باي حد هيحب يشترك معانا ان شاء الله يا دكتور احنا احنا شيرنا اللينك وان شاء الله الناس كتير هتحضر وانا ان شاء الله عن نفسي هحضر يعني اتفضل شرف 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 يا دكتور شكرا دكتور ياسر شكرا لحضرتك وشكرا لوقت حضرتك شكرا ليك الله مع السلامه مع السلامه